Hello everyone, welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope everyone's having um, a good one. I hope everyone had a good evening, got a good night's rest. We made it through this full moon, super moon, blood eclipse and all that super blood moon eclipse, whatever, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. We all made it to the other side. For those of you that did not make it, that crossed over last night, although I'm sure if any of you crossed over last night, you wouldn't be watching this right now, but I pray for you. I hope you're feeling much better than you were when you were here. Yes? So, anyway, we have made it. Um, so I hope everyone is doing well, feeling well. I did wake up with a little bit of a headache this morning, which is weird. Um, but... Oh, and funny story, I was laying, I, I went to bed pretty early last night, and I was laying in bed, and I, the, the moon was shining right through my window. I was like, oh, you know what? I'm not about to fall asleep with this full moonlight shining on me, so let me close my, <laughs> close my, my, my shades. It was, I thought it was pretty funny. Okay, anyway, back to business. This is going to be a general energy reading for today, Monday, uh, January 21st, 2019. Um, this is a general energy reading, okay? So take what resonates and leave what doesn't. The energies are fluid, so just because um, it is dated for today, it does not mean necessarily that it's something that's going to happen today. Um, it could happen in the future. It may have already passed. And again, because this is a general reading, it may not resonate with you at all. But you might be able to find some nuggets of information to pull through, yeah? So let's get into this, guys. Monday, January 21st. Happy Martin Luther King Day. Um, many of us are off of work right now, but if you're self-employed, you work every day. <laughs> okay, here we go, guys. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for today, Monday, January 21st, 2019. Thank you so much, Spirit. It's really interesting, guys, because I'm seeing, I, as I was pulling forward the energy, I was seeing this, like, rainbow-like thing. Uh, so, if you guys haven't had a chance to check out um, that video that I mentioned from the Leo King, um, please go ahead and do so. It, the link is in the description box to um, the weekend edition of Morning Coffee. Um, but he talks about how we moved into, with this full moon here, we're moving into, yeah, that's the Ten of Cups and the Chariot are underneath the deck. That's kind of catching my attention right now. But we're moving into this brand new paradigm. Um, it's like we've, we've made a transition into a whole new energetic state, um, fully equipped with new angels, apparently, <laughs> which is really cool. So it's actually, it's, it's really cool, or it makes sense that, you know, the Chariot and the Ten of Cups would be right here catching my attention because um, it's like a spirit is saying it's a new state of unconditional love. It's a new vibration for those of us that have been working towards it. Um, and the rainbow color, it's kind of rainbowish. I mean, there was a lot of, it was almost like a tan-ish color. Um, but then there were all these other bright colors around it, um, blue, pink, yellow, you know, all that kind of stuff, green, um, which was giving me a rainbowish feel. It was all kind of swirling around, and I, it, it felt like I was seeing, um, okay, so it was this tan, look at this here. I don't remember what kind of stone this is, but you see that the, the tan in this stone here? It's almost like a pinkish color. That was the base color that I, ooh, that I was seeing, and then there were a bunch of other swirls around it. Um, and now we have the, the King of Cups here, emotional maturity, um, uh, being willing to express your emotions, being willing to take action um, in accordance with your heart, with love, being in love. Um, some masculine energies are really waking up now, are, are, are starting to get their gears rolling, getting, you know, getting, getting juice in the engine, you know, starting to get ready, starting to get moving which is pretty beautiful. The masculine energy within you is going through an awakening as well, even if you identify more with the feminine side of things. 
right, January, Monday, January 21st. I need to pay my credit card today. <laughs> One last shuffle. All right, guys, let's see what we've got for today. Here we go. Best messages, please, Spirit. Thank you so much. Best messages for the collective today. What do we need to talk about today, Spirit? What do we need to talk about? Monday, January 21st, 2019. Okay. Wow. That came flying out. All right. Underneath the deck, we have shadow work. Oof. All right. Um, so I'm already getting something with that so far. Shadow work is talking about, it's quite obvious, to be, to be quite honest. It, it really is quite obvious what shadow work means. All right. Doing that shadow work, facing your shadow, uh, honoring your shadow. Okay. Your shadow is not something to run from. It's not evil. It's not bad. It is a part of you. It is an intrinsic part of you, much like your ego. It needs to be honored. Your shadow is a very important part of your existence as it gives you a look into what it is that needs to be healed, what it is that um, you're hiding from, that you are holding back, that you're not expressing, all right? Um, shadow is, very, is, is a very important step Doing the shadow work is a very important step in the ascension process, okay? You have the fool, which is in reverse, with the moon child, which is also in reverse, all right? So for some of us, this is talking about, um, you know, we've crossed over, okay? We've taken this leap of faith. We did our shadow work. Uh, we surmounted this moon energy. We used the cycle of the moon to... Uh, make this change okay um we have we have surmounted this moon energy the full moon is past now i mean we're still probably going to be experiencing some of the energies because energies are fluid it's not like it's like a light switch it just stops it's going to flow out it's going to subside over time but essentially it's peaked and it's moved on we have the ace of cups here and finally we have <laughs> we have the hanged man still all right so Right, well, what Spirit just said was we have surmounted the energies, okay? We have taken them on. Um, we've gained some enlightenment. There might be still a little bit of a hang-up. Like I said, like I said, um, the, 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 the peak of the full moon has passed, okay? But um, we're still going to be feeling some of the effects of it. So maybe some of you might be still feeling a little bit in limbo, a little bit that's going to subside. Now, the biggest part of this message is for those of us that have had trouble surmounting these energies, getting through um, what this full moon represented for us, the portal that we were crossing through and all that stuff. Um, some of you have heavily resisted um, uh, taking this leap of faith, moving forward in a new way, taking the moon uh, cycles you know, using this moon cycle to really propel you forward. You need to do the shadow work. The shadow work that you are needing to do is going to help you find this Ace of Cups here, okay? This self-love, this divine love. And this right here is your ticket into the fifth dimension, okay? This new paradigm that everybody's talking about, um, this new reality. It's not necessarily going to look any different, but your vibration is going to be different. You will be seeing things, uh, you, you, not that you'll be seeing like, well, for some of you, for some of you, if you're, if you're a uh, clairvoyant, you might start to see, see things differently or see energy or whatnot, but um, you'll perceive the circumstances and the people and the places and whatnot around you differently. Um, You'll see yourself, you'll experience yourself differently. Um, 
but in order to do in order to get there you have to find this love within okay some of you had an opportunity to take this leap but you chose not to take it and now it, okay but it's not that simple some of you chose not to take it for comfort's sake others of you it was a bit too extreme for you and you didn't know what to do with it that's okay the hanged man is here to say that everything you're 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 you're, you're developing a new perspective it's going to take time don't worry it's not like you've well, I mean, the Leo King was talking about how, you know, you're not going to get another chance like this for like another 18 years. I don't necessarily want to say that because that makes me sad. <laughs> I don't like the fact of like leaving anybody behind, but. Give me a second. I'm just um, I'm channeling here. See if there's anything else I can get for you guys here. Now, I, I, for some of us, there's still some shadow work to do, even though we took advantage of this situation. And um, and honestly, if you if you really took advantage of this situation, you've been preparing for this for months, uh, probably since like November, December. You've been in the transition process towards this and you may not necessarily have been um, aware of it until like now uh, but this would be for those of us that have really been following our intuition following the guidance that we've been getting paying attention to our dreams paying attention to the synchronicities the signs from the universe and all that um, those of us that that were in that vibration those of us, those are the ones that, you know, we're really preparing for this paradigm shift. And we've already taken the leap of faith here, okay? But that doesn't mean that there still isn't any shadow work to left to be done. I feel like for some of us, there is just a little bit of residual cleanup. But again, it's not even like it's a big thing, you know? It's already just like, it's almost like it's set in stone for some of you. No, for all of spirit is saying for all of us who have crossed over into this new thing and you might be feeling some sort of physical symptoms like i woke up with a slight headache this morning um so you might be feeling something like that a headache maybe some achiness maybe some you might have some you know you might, might break out your skin um you might have a rash of some sort uh, some of you might be experiencing some sort of vertigo in a way or just like spaciness. Um, this is acclimating to this new vibration, which is saying, which to me is also speaking to some of the shadow work that needs to be done. It is the purging of residual uh, dense energies. Now, now that you're in this higher vibratory rate, this hybrid vibratory state, okay? The Ace of Cups and the Hanged Man is talking about how there's a message coming through with how how important this process of the Hanged Man state, how important it really can be. It's very powerful and very potent, and I've actually never seen it this way before, but... <laughs> Spirit just said illusions of grandeur. And what I'm seeing and hearing in that is being in some sort of limbo like this, a type of limbo that the hanged man represents, being in, feeling stuck or in a precarious position. It is one of the most powerful tools for breaking yourself free of any sort of illusions of grandeur. And that's what's happened to many of us over, I want to say over the past year, you know, from like, oh, maybe even a year and a half, maybe from like from, eh, we'll say two years, from 2017 to 2018, 
we've had this hanged man moment and it didn't necessarily feel like it especially for those of us that were on the twin flame journey because you know we got we exploded onto the scene with all this craziness that well all of this emotion that felt like craziness um and okay it was pretty crazy at certain points but it was very much a limbo a hanged man situation because we felt all the energies and yet we really couldn't do much about it, could we? But what did that teach us? Self-love. How to love ourselves, how to honor ourselves, how to fill up our own cups. Which led us to take this leap of faith, which we have done. Okay. Well, gee, that's pretty beautiful. All right. Let's get some clarification here. I want to start with the fool and the moon child in reverse. Moon child in, is a unique card to this deck, just like shadow work. And moon child talks about um, working with the cycles of the moon and what are you learning from the cycles of the moon about yourself, about the world around you. How are you growing? How are you changing? And what, the, what Spirit is saying with the Fool and the Moon Child in reverse, it's saying for the most part we have surmounted these energies and we've crossed over into this new paradigm, into the other side. They're also saying don't expect it to be this like extreme contrast between where we were before and where we are now. Because it's, it's not even really about that. It's more about the feeling, the vibration. The strength that you have acquired to hold your own in spiritual awareness, spiritual truth, and spiritual reality, okay? That's what that whole last, the last two weeks have been an extreme test in staying true to your convictions. And if you've done that, then you've passed, okay? Spirit is saying the devil can't get you down anymore. You've, um, for many of you, you've released the ancestral karma, which is good. All right. One last shuffle, and then we're gonna so we're gonna get some clarification on the fool in reverse and the moon child in reverse. Archangel Michael is here. I don't know if you guys heard. There he is. Hey, Archangel Michael. <laughs> All right. The fool and the moon child in reverse. Please, spirit, clarify for us, please. Please, oh, please, oh, please, oh, please. Okay, that's it. Underneath the deck is the magician. Look at that. That's fantastic. Manifestation. But this is conscious manifestation now, guys. We have reached a level where, you know, our thoughts, our thoughts have, and our emotions, they've always been really strong, really potent. But now it's, it's more like we understand how strong they are and if you've really been doing the work over these last two weeks, it's like you've, you've leveled up. Oh, wow. Look at this, guys. The Ten of Cups with the Seven of Wands in reverse. There's, there is a release of defensiveness here. There's a release of blockage here that has come into play. And that is facilitated by the union within, says spirit. And it's so crazy because I've been feeling this myself lately. It's like I, lately I've just been within like the past two or three days. I've just really been very happy where I am and balanced and secure and grateful and feeling whole like like just being in my space i just love it it's like i really don't yeah sure there are some things that you know get on my nerves i do have three roommates so you know that's that's not always a pretty picture but ultimately this is where we are right now guys and the defense the, the defenses have been dropped for many of us that are on this twin flame journey this is what, either what we are feeling or what we're moving towards or what we have the potential to feel. But in order to get here, you have to find a greater sense of union and balance within. Now, I'm not gonna sit here and toot my own horn and say I'm completely balanced, I am 100% in, in, in self-union. No, screw that, 
Okay, it's not, it's not, no. <laughs> I'm not gonna say that because I don't, because that's whatever. But for many of us, there is a deeper sense of union that has come into play, which is allowing us to release the defenses. And the biggest defense, some of the biggest defenses that are being released are the defenses towards manifesting what it is you truly desire. I really feel like a lot of us, a lot of us have come to, especially in the face of this union that we've had now. Okay, okay. Before I go any further, I want to clarify. This is the Ten of Cups. Yes. Um, but I am seeing this as a union card. I have been seeing this as a union card for a few weeks now because the way, at least the way this is depicted here, you have a family, mother, father, and child. And I've been saying for many of us, that is the inner family, the inner masculine, the inner feminine, and the inner child. And with all the inner child work that we've been doing lately and the balancing work that we've been doing lately, there you go. You got it. Okay. But the, one of the biggest blockages that is being released is towards manifesting what it is you truly desire and that takes that has been taking that has taken on a whole new classification lately because you're getting back to who you truly are okay at one point it was like okay yeah i'm manifesting what i truly want but a lot of that was under the guise of the past your conditioning who you were in the past who you were what you were told to create or who you were told to be right but now that we've been doing this shadow work, ding, 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 and we've been getting down to the core of who we are, that has changed into manifesting what it is you really, really want. Like, what do you really, really, really want? Like, ultimately, all the bullshit aside, what is it that you truly desire? Forget all of the conditioning. Forget all the career goals. Forget all of, the, all of that shit. What is it that you really want to experience in this lifetime? on this planet well you're manifesting it that's beautiful guys that ugh, I love that okay let's clarify this ace of cups with the hanged man please spirit whoa okay page of swords okay there are some ooh death there are some people that are still in this hanged man state you have the Queen of Pentacles underneath the deck. Okay, there are some people that are still in this hanged man state. And um, it's if you have really worked on getting this self-love here, there could be some, of them, some people that are watching you here. Um, trying to figure out how you made this transformation. Okay? And... This doesn't really even have to be anybody significant. Like, I'm not necessarily saying that this is a soulmate or your twin flame or whatnot. No, this could just be, you know, people that work with you, people that see you every once in a while and just that are, are familiar with you, but don't can't put their finger on it, but know that you've, you've changed somehow. Well, how did you do that? And how can I do that? And with this Queen of Pentacles energy here, this is that nurturing, that motherly, loving energy. Be like, yeah, I can help you. But check it out. It's not going to be easy. Honestly, I really feel like the Queen of Pentacles is the best figure out of the whole deck. And not even the king, but the queen is the best individual out of the whole deck to help you make this sort of transition. Because she is an earthly creature. She's an earthly figure, okay? She knows what it's like to be here to live here on earth, to struggle, to strive, to live, to survive, right? And if you want to make this change into this paradigm of love, the Queen of Pentacles is perfect because not only is she all that, but she's also a motherly figure. She holds un unconditional love and compassion for her children when she's positively aspected. And she can, I mean, she can be the mother to anybody, right? She is like the earthly version, the depiction of the Divine Mother in many cases, or at least in my opinion. But she's also not going to take any shit. And she, she's very much going to enforce some tough love when it's needed. And that is absolutely what you need when you're doing your shadow work here, okay? So the more that you can embody this Queen of Pentacles energy to help people, to be of service to people, the better, okay? Because there is still this transformation is happening. Some people are held up right now with the hanged man because they need to learn to fill their own cup, the Ace of Cups here. 
So I guess you can put, yeah, you can, you can, I guess you can call this an APB, okay? All points bulletin. You know, going out to all light workers out there or anybody that wants to help people make this shift and transition, don't go looking for it. But because you have to allow people to make that decision to change on their own, to seek the help on their own. But if you do want to help people, hold the vibration. Shield yourself, protect yourself because you're about to you're about to become a beacon, okay? And that's going to that could make you susceptible to psychic attacks. But so uh, hold your hold your ground. Um, shield yourself, uh, uh, work with the violet flame meditation f fairly regularly or whenever you feel is best to keep your energies refreshed. Continue to work with the um, sovereignty mantra. I do still say that every once in a while. It is still in the description box of my videos. Um, oh, also with the sovereignty mantra, um, make sure to re-invite God, Source, Creator, your angels, the angels of love and light, the angels of uh, the archangels of love and light, the ascended masters, your guardians, um, your your ancestors, anything, anyone that you wish to be in your life to help you. You must re-invite them into your space after you recite the sovereignty mantra because basically, at least if you're saying mine, the one that I have in the description box, because there you're saying no entity can enter my space without my express conscious permission. So once you say that, I mean, they're all just going to stand there and be like, okay, well, we need that invitation again. <laughs> okay, so just keep that in mind. All right, we have one last card here. The Eight of Swords. <clears throat> now, you're... Wow, this is really interesting. So this is for those people that are still in this limbo, that are trying to go through this transformation. It's like you're holding yourselves back here with the Eight of Swords. And this is out of fear that I'm getting. It's like you're, you're not wanting to make this transition because you don't know what's going to happen. Well, okay. But that's the universe. You're stepping into the unknown just about any time you take a step in a new direction outside of your comfort zone. But if you have this firm ace of cups here, this self-love, this union with yourself, which also means union with the divine, you don't have to worry about stepping into the unknown. Okay? There are some people out there that are watching that are... They're stuck between a rock and a hard place. They want to make this transition. They want to be free to do their own thing, like many of us are becoming. But with the Eight of Swords energy, they refuse to let go of the circumstances. They refuse to remove themselves, release themselves from the prison, the mental prison. And they're literally, there is nothing anyone else but themselves can do about that. because they have to be the ones to remove themselves from the prison, okay? Alrighty, guys. So let's get into some Oracle. I want to go back to the animal spirits today. Um, I actually, I want to... For the, this, I want to pull a card of animal this, and from the animal spirits for those here with the, that are still in the hanged man energy still trying to work on filling this cup this cup of self-love here that are wanting to make this change wanting to go through through this transition but are refusing to release themselves from the mental prison with the eight of swords but yet they're watching they're inquisitive it's so weird and actually i'm picking up that that's partly ego i mean you're inquisitive you're watching because deep down you want to make this transition, but your ego won't let you. Nor will you, your ego allow you to admit <laughs> that it's what you want. This is definitely an ego death, okay? So for some of you that are, that are in fact transitioning here into this new paradigm, you're going through an ego death. That is the last of the shadow work that can be that is being done for some of you. Okay? All right. One more shuffle.
All right, spirit. Best messages, please. Cr oh my goodness. Leave it there, Eric. Oh my goodness. Hey, hey, with Tiger. Tiger is underneath the deck. So Tiger is about moon cycles, is about lunar energy. Yes, is about the feminine. Um, it's about, you know, taking time to rest and recuperate after, you know, spending some time with the moon or working with the moon cycles. I mean, this is perfect. We just came out of this major moon cycle. And look what animal showed up to help us transition. Crow. Perfect, guys. Oh, just you wait. Oh, just you wait. I'm going to read this for you. Just you wait. <laughs> I love crows. I absolutely love them. I think they're ab they're gorgeous birds. Um, and I love what they represent. I love what they stand for. Crows and um, ravens are, they often get a bad rap because of their association with death. But me personally, I do not fear death. I think death is, well obviously, death is an integral part of existence. Death is literally just a transition from one state of being to another. All right. So here we have Crow. Spiritually strong, creative, and watchful. The Crow has long been a symbol of magic. A Crow personality is drawn to the supernatural and has a gift for seeing the unseen, knowing the unknown. It is said that the crow holds within its mind's eye the three realities, past, present, and future. Crow energy is potent and should only be tapped into when the mind is clear. Those with crow tendencies must balance their lives with a healthy diet, joyful friends, and regular self-study. When in balance, crow is psychic, strong, and clear. When out of balance, crow is ungrounded and hypersensitive. To bring into balance, one must... Uh, um, uh, take on a daily med meditation practice. So Crow is here specifically to help people cross over. Okay. So please take the advice of Crow seriously and start meditating if you haven't been doing so already. Start with like five minutes a day. All right. Shit. Start with two minutes a day. I don't, I don't know. Uh, meditate right before you go to sleep at night. Like lay in bed and, and practice, you know, focusing on your breath. That That's helpful too. All right. So now I want to close the reading with the uh, one message from the Lightworker Oracle. All right. Best message, please, Spirit, for today, Monday, January 21st, 2019. Best message, please, Spirit. Is this the right? Yes, I'm using the right one. Okay. Aw. All right, cool. We have card number 43, sixth ray of devotion. Okay. There we go. All right. The sixth ray of devotion bestows the qualities of persistence, unwavering focus, and intensity of feeling. It is a gift of the strength to move mountains with your will for what you love. When the sixth ray of devotion appears, you are being given guidance that even if you do not seem to have much worldly power right now, the power of your beliefs can conquer obstacles. The Archangel Uriel helps you receive the blessings of the sixth ray now. I'm going to read a little bit more. You're receiving a blessing of the sixth ray of devotion. It is serving your soul growth and will help you develop faith in your principles and trust in the power of your beliefs. You will be able to recognize and appreciate the extraordinary strength within you and realize that you have enough willpower to keep working towards your dream, overcoming any obstacle until you are divinely successful. The sixth ray reminds you of the power of love, which can conquer anything and everything. 
Love is an empowering, motivating force far stronger, far stronger, excuse me, than fear. Love is the foundation of authentic spiritual devotion. Devotion to the divine empowers us to bear burdens, overcome obstacles, and manifest all manifold, all manner of beautiful visions in a world that may at first assure us that our dream is not possible. The sixth ray blesses you with spiritual stubbornness and sacred rebellion against any odds. Okay, the challenge with the sixth ray is to not become so anchored in your beliefs that you become fanatical, judging others because their beliefs are different. You can be unwavering in your adherence to your belief system and yet honor the fact that there are as many paths to divine union as there are people. I say that all the time. There are ma as many paths to, um, to walk in spirituality. There are as many paths to God, source, creator, whatnot, as there are people on this planet. Wow. Um, you can be unwavering in your adherence to your belief system and yet honor the fact that there are as many paths to divine union as there are people, that the ways the universe calls you home to love are unlimited. Mm. Okay. If you do not honor this, you may try to pull people from their own path, which can create unnecessary struggle for them and unnecessary karma for you. The best way to honor the blessing and minimize the challenge of this ray is to share your truth with an open heart and an open mind. Share without agenda. For those working with this energy, the power of mind and emotions will come into focus. You may need to channel your emotion and mental power into worthy projects or practice balancing your intensity with lightness of heart and playfulness so you don't become harsh or despairing if things appear not to be working out the way you believe they should. Then your faith can remain, I'm sorry, then your faith can remind you love always finds a way. Okay. Oh, no, no. Hold on. Archangel Uriel wants me to finish this. He's like, don't leave me out. How dare you? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, wait. Just this last paragraph. Okay. When Archangel, con when Archangel Uriel connects with you, a tremendous power, the power of Earth, is brought to your aid. And that's actually what I was talking about with the Queen of Pentacles here. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Uriel brings healing energy and an ability to cause real effect in the physical world with your mental and emotional power. Remember, you are here to shine your light. Others can choose to use your light to see by until they are ready to discover their own inner light, or not. It is not anything you need to worry about. Simply live your truth, trust in your heartfelt beliefs, and devote yourself to love. Okay, now I'm going to leave it there. Thank you so much for tuning in, guys. I hope you all have a great day and I'm potentially going to be doing happy hour tonight. I have not decided yet. I'm not sure. We'll see how my day goes. But regardless, I hope you all have a great day and I look forward to connecting with you again very, very soon. Yeah. Take care. Mwah. Bye.